it's still a bass. Like it's not unlike a largemouth bass. Yeah, like yeah. You, they're an ambush predator. They like to hang around structure. Like that's what you're looking for. That's a really special thing about them is you can you can find them if you're standing on on a jetty. You can find them if you're out in the boat and fishing a rip or fishing an inlet or whatever. Um, and then you can pretend like you're in the Bahamas and go find mm -hmm. a, a, a sandbar or a sand flat or whatever and and do it that way. There, there's like, something for everyone. Yeah. Like when you're targeting straight bass. Yeah. You could be night fishing yeah. from surf, oh, yeah. and it can yeah. be insane. You could go yep. put live eels out at night and it and like Just catch forty inch fish. You could be the you know the fly guy using super light gear, you targeting you know so fish in smaller water, whatever yep. it is. Like they, they're yeah they they will give you. You could chase them forever and, and not fish them the same way twice. Like That's it's cool. just. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Skiff Wanderer podcast. Today, I am joined by Marty Gallopo from Bad Fish and Brian Reynolds from... No, I said it wrong. I threw the D in there. It's fine. We just had a That's giant normal. discussion That's about That's extremely... This. I thought that was pretty good. Runnels? That's on brand. Runnels yeah. Yeah. from Post Fly and Pelican Reels and Wade Rod... What don't you make? Um, Money. It's money. <laughs> 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 End podcast. End podcast. <laughs> and that's the show. Thanks. <laughs> now, so I've spent the last couple of days fishing with these guys up in New England. It has been some lights out, amazing weather, awesome fishing. Today, we're going to talk about bad fish. We're going to talk about post fly. And we're going to go into some tips on striper fishing, Alby fishing, which we all, we've decided we hate or we love. Where are we at with that? So, I mean, it's still, obviously, it's a love hate. We spent, well, what did we spend? 10 hours that day. Yeah. It was hate. Yeah. Just and then there was, it, 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 was, it was bad. It was very bad. And then it was three hours of love. So I'd say it's most, it's a 95% 95 hate. hate. Yeah. 95% yeah. hate. And then the five, five percent, oh, 10 that, seconds of just pure joy. Keeps it you keeps coming you coming back. back. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> so good. I love it. I love Albie fishing. <laughs> um, we will start with Marty. We'll start with you and oh, bad gosh. fish. Okay. You can tell us a little bit about the First, bad fish story. Oh, you want the podcast version or the Lord of the Rings trilogy extended? The cut? podcast yeah. version. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the OnlyFans uh, version. Yeah. The director's <laughs> cut. <laughs> um, I won't. Go, I won't go too too far back, but. I guess the, the first thing we, we, we started with was um, my, my buddy Dylan and I, who I started with, his, uh, his boat down in Newport was called Badfish. He na had named the boat Badfish. And I had gotten really into fishing in college, um, specifically just started saltwater fly fishing. Actually, I don't even know if I had started fly fishing, but I got, I was crazy into fishing and then I started seeing like YouTube videos of of saltwater fly fishing for a tarpon or permit or whatever. And I was like, Oh my God, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, and I knew that Dylan had, had fly fish. So I hit him up and I was like, Hey, do you, you know, are you still fly fishing? He's like, yeah, it's been a little while, but, um, we, I, I moved home from college and back to Newport and, uh, we started going out and, and we started <laughs> filming ourselves on like GoPros and yeah. like GoPro one, the old, yeah, yeah. Taking terrible videos. Um, and we had called ourselves like Team Badfish, which was very cheesy. Um, but we had, to, you know, Instagram had just started. So we were taking really goofy Instagram photos and like over filtering them. This is 2012, 2013. Yeah. This yeah. is like the time to get into Instagram. I know. We were like yeah. the third phishing account on Instagram, which was probably beneficial. Um, but we were just taking these like oversaturated photos and like editing the crap out of them. Um, but we started building a following because it was like the Wild West of Instagram. Right. Um, so then we, we took our like Team Badfish name, whatever, called it Badfish Angling, um, which was also a terrible name. Uh, and then uh, they just kind of like started building following, um, started sharing content, uh, and got to a point where, you know, we had been sharing a bunch of content. We were trying to create this like aggregated, basically YouTube, but mm -hmm. just fishing stuff. So... 
that was going to be tough to compete with YouTube. Um, but we were sharing a bunch of content. We were like, you know what? We can we can make some of this. Like we can we can do a pretty good job at making fishing content. Like we're already out here. So we got a couple, you know, DSLR cameras. So nothing too crazy, and uh, convinced someone to give us five hundred bucks to shoot a fishing video, um, a little branded video. Uh, did that a couple times, and that kind of kicked off the, you know, the the production company side. And then you've since like like what are you guys up to nowadays? Nowadays, well, yeah, a lot of a, a big journey from then, but nowadays, um, I joined Brian in what was it? 18, 18, 19, 18, 19, 18, 19. <laughs> 18, 19. Uh, and Brian, well, well, of course he'll share the story, but, yeah. uh, with the fly fishing subscription box, um, he had wanted to get into kind of like a, some saltwater tackle. One of the first things that you, you, um, when you were first started the subscription box was you had started with a, a tackle subscription, right? What? <laughs> in the early in the early days of post you had started with like a you had been getting a subscription yes that was the yeah, it was kind of like the inspiration for the whole thing yeah so we kind of wanted to do a good job at that we had we, like we're trying to think of like names for a tax subscription whatever and we're like well we got this brand yeah. called bad fish like very saltwater focused um like why don't we just use that it's yeah. perfect so jumped into that started a subscription Started in products, and kind of bring brings us to where we are today. I got you, Brian. Post fly. How that all get started? Mm -hmm. The year was nineteen oh five. I uh, tried to do the sixty second version of this. I um, grew up being super passionate about fishing. M yeah. Not fly fishing. Um, never really got into that until until a little bit later. Um, but. Um, did a ton of striped bass fishing and just, I just was loved it and tried to do it whenever, you know, uh, tried to fish whenever I could. I got introduced to fly fishing when, um, I don't know, probably my early twenties after college some, at some point. And I was living in Boston at the time and I was enamored with fly fishing. I thought it was great. I was like, damn, this is fucking cool. Like, you, can, you know, the, the tr you can do it a million different ways. You can do the trout thing. You can do the saltwater thing. This is fantastic. I sucked at it. Um, but I wanted to learn more and, um, and I, I wanted to get better, but there, there was nothing. I mean, this was, so this was, um, 2000 and 12, 13, same time, mm -hmm. uh, that same yeah. time that Marty was getting going with Badfish and there was nothing online or I should say there was just very little online, um, uh, but it, it, by, by way of, uh, uh, helping people get into it. Uh, and there was like one fly shop uh, in the Boston area. It's like an hour away from me. Which that was that was never never gonna work. And I think I went to a fly shop once, and I was like, these guys were using these fucking name bug names and all this other shit, and I couldn't I couldn't understand. I, I, had, I had no clue what they were talking about. I was intimidated. They wanted me to spend a thousand bucks, so yeah, that didn't work. So at the time, my wife had signed me up, like Marty said, for um, for uh, and they're no longer around, but um, subs a, a tackle subscription um, thing, and it was called. Um, it was called tackle grab. Tackle grab. Yeah. That's correct. Tackle grab. Um, and it turned out like, and I, I had a, a, just got my first boat at the time and I was doing some striper fishing and I was getting these plugs and things in this box that were like the best producing striper lures that I was using during any given period. Now. So I was enamored with this concept of like learning about things um, through, uh, through the subscription concept. And the script sub subscription was also like, that was the birth of like, uh, like, uh, the early Harry's days. and the, the yeah, Dollar yeah. Shave Club yeah. and yeah. Birch Box for which was obviously big for women. Um, that stuff was had just t taken off and become a real thing. So it it was um, it was uh, there was a certain novelty to the yeah. subscription box thing at that point. Um, and I kind of just like well, I don't know was like sitting around and getting frustrated with the fly fishing thing and trying to put the pieces together. And I was like, damn, you know, like. I think I could probably do this. Like, I don't, I don't, I didn't know anything about fly fishing when yeah. I started this company. I mean, I'm talking about, I, I didn't know. I could barely <laughs> cast a fly rod when I started post fly, but I did the bet. My, my, my bet was that I know that there are enough people out there that want to learn how to fly fish. And I bet that they are as frustrated as I am. And that was like enough to like, try to try to do it. Yeah. 
Um, and so, so did it. And, um, and you know, I learned fly fishing through post fly, like, which was this pretty organic kind of thing. Like I got, and it, for, at first it was just me for a couple of years, but then it beca- me became we and the team, you know, I had one employee and then we had four and so on and so forth. And so then we were able to like share our journey of learning fly fishing yeah. with these our customers and our, our audience who are also in the same spot. They're also wanting to learn. So it's a very kind of organic thing. And um, so anyway, so that was kind of like the, the, the start of it. Um, and, you know, we, like you said at the beginning, like we, we it evolved and, and we grew and we were like, man, like we're the rod and reel game. Like why yeah. are people spending all this money on rods and reels? I mean, like the, the, there is this, there's this, thing with retail where like <laughs> a rod that only costs a manufacturer 50 bucks to to make a consumer has to spend six or seven hundred dollars on it and it's not because it's worth six or seven hundred dollars it's because yeah. it has to pass through four, three four sets of hands to just to get to the retailer and everybody has to make their money along the way and and so you know we we, we wanted to we wanted to sort of mess with that and and um and and, and deliver the same product and uh, to our customers and, and, and sort of kill the middleman and all that and um, and so that was, you know, we added these things on and we grew. And like Marty said, we, we, um, we, we, you know, scooped up Dylan and Marty and started getting into the saltwater thing and started really having a ton of fun. And, um, and, and COVID came along and was this weird, like at first very scary, oh shit, it's all over. I remember <laughs> yeah. this moment, <laughs> yeah. like we kind of like, it was, I don't know if we were crying or what, but like we had this like come to Jesus of like, well, it was a good this, run. It was a good run. <laughs> yeah, like, good this run. is it. And then very quickly, the cash register started going off, um, and we thought it was broken yeah. at first because we were like, oh, why is it? What's, what says? It says it's 10 times what we normally make in a day, <laughs> and so something must be broken. Um, and that, and, and, we, and we rode that and decided, like, you know what? Like, if there's ever a time to, like, try to bolt this thing on to an even bigger company, like, now is the time. And we're, we're, we're riding pretty high, and we did that. And, and, and obviously now we're, we're um, you know, we're part of the Catch Co. train and trying to do continue to do the same stuff and innovate and grow and find new ways to connect with people and all that. I remember, like, some of the first times walking into fly shops and talking to people it's it's super intimidating oh, like they start dropping names of flies and you ask them about a rod and they'll tell you you know all these different weights and then all these different actions and then you know you're just sitting there like uh wait what yeah like slow down you're so like, i got 199 dollars dude <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah i'll then, take i'll take whatever that is <laughs> yeah and then they hit you with like the bill at the end and you're like okay let's yeah. let's start this from yeah. the beginning because this yeah. is going to be way too much I'm not going to sit here and knock tackle shops or fly shops or whatever, but I think we we shared like a, a similar feeling towards it. like they're they're fan, fantastic, right? Yeah. Shop, fly shop, but like it is it's scary. It's, like going it's in there scary, and especially when you're first starting. Like yeah. I I was just nervous going in there. Like you, you don't want to be the guy asking like, hey, so what yeah. are they hitting on? Where, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where where do I go? Like, can yeah. you point me in the right direction? Whatever. But I think we're just trying to like bridge that gap of someone that's. That's just learning. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, and we live kind of in an age where like, if I, I mean, I know personally, like if I have to call somebody, it's like, do I really need to do that? Or can I just, you know, not, not have to do whatever it is that I had to call somebody for? Like if I can fill out a form or, or like book a reservation or something online without having to ever talk to anybody. Right. I'm a lot more like willing yeah. to do it. And if, especially like, you know, like, Oh, let me drive to this fly shop to be intimidated by somebody, right. which I mean, like, I'm going to say all that. And, and again, at the same time, like if you're getting into fly fishing or just fishing in general, like you should 100% go down and talk For to sure. the guys at the fly shop and not be intimidated. But that it, it doesn't it, just saying that doesn't make yeah. it any less right. intimidating. It, it's, it's tough. There's a ba- like, that's one of the main, <clears throat> I, th- I think the main barriers with, with fly yeah. fishing is that you have a, there is a lot of like tactile learning you have to do. You have yeah. to learn how to fl- cast fly rod. That's intimidating. Yeah, you know, someone has to teach you how to do that. Right. So that, there's there's a thing there, and then there's that that first sort of waltz into a shop where you're like, when you don't know something and there's a lot to learn and there's a lot there's scientific names of animals and things involved and all this stuff like, 
it, it, there's, it, it's an extreme, there's a lot of reasons not to, there, there's a lot of reasons to talk yourself out of doing that. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and, uh, anyway, and that's, that's, we, like, I think, I think both brands, like we, that, that's kind of like what we tapped into. It's like, how do we, how do we help you get comfortable with that? Yeah. Um, how can we provide these products and services to, to cater to that? Um, and, and get you comfortable and, 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 and on your way with, with fishing. Like listening to that and the approach you guys have had has been like really similar to the approach of the content like that I'm trying to create is like, how can I get information to someone that's starting out? Because like, you know, I, I've kind of realized like if you're in your like teens, early twenties, it's really easy to, to pick up a mentor to kind of like guide you along find friends that do it and, and move from there. But like you get into your late twenties, early thirties and probably even older, like you go start talking like I, the way, honestly, the way I've kind of seen it is people start kind of seeing you as a threat. <laughs> like, Oh, who's this guy? He's going to start guiding in, in two months if I teach him anything. So it's harder. It's a lot harder at that stage in life. I think to just jump into fly fishing and, and really get into it. So I think what you guys are doing is awesome. Just kind of bridging that gap and helping people because you know, people need it and people want to yeah. do it, you know? Sort of an interesting thing with the, like beginners too is like when we got going, they were ignored. Like yeah. the big mm -hmm. brands were ignoring yeah. beginners. They were like, everyone was focused on like selling the thousand dollar rod yeah. and the thousand dollar reel and all that stuff, which was like, that's great stuff. I mean, I'm not, not that it's, it's high, Even, quali it's high quality stuff. Eventually like, you're going to go out and spend that on a rod. Eventually, eventually right. will. Yeah. Right. Um, but they, I mean, largely the beginners were fully ignored, which, which perfect time, right? Like to, yeah. to come in and, and, and do this type of stuff was, was recognizing that and being like, Oh, well actually like, we'll just, we can ignore experts and we can ignore the dudes that are spending a lot of money on stuff. Yeah. Um, but there's few of them and there are a lot of people at the front door trying to be like, Hey man, like how do I, how do I spend a little bit of money and, and start getting into this thing and, and, and learn it? It seems like, it seems like the whole industry is slowly gravitating yes. towards like, how do we get more people involved yeah. in this? Yeah. It's, it, fly fishing, especially like right now, but in fishing in general, it's one of those things where like, you know, you're, you're dad taught you or yep. your uncle or grandfather or whatever but it's a very it's, it's a like show me kind of yeah, thing. yeah it's yeah. like unless someone shows you how to do it that shows you how to not like show shows you out in the water how to do stuff like you have no idea it's not like you you grab a guitar and you want to learn guitar it's like okay i'll sit in my chair By and myself. watch a video yeah. and watch some yeah. tutorials like you have to get out there on the water <clears throat> and you have to do it and like most of the stuff is probably until, you know, pretty recently has to be shown to you. Um, so yeah, that's just another yeah. challenge to yeah. it that makes it a little bit diff different and diff more difficult than learning. There's only, else. there's only like so many casts you can make in your yard. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. Which, right. which is a good, which like you, better you be gotta doing. do it. You gotta, <laughs> expect, like you start getting into double haunt, whatever, like you gotta figure that stuff out. But until you get out on a boat or mm -hmm. go run around on the surf or whatever, and you got the wind in your face and the fish are blowing up and you're freaking out and whatever, <laughs> yeah. like it does none of the, you could, it doesn't matter if you have a, a thousand hours of casting in your yard, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna fumble. Oh, uh, I, I uh, was falling apart in front of Albies right? left and right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like the last two days, like they'd be frothing yeah. all around the boat and I'm like, how do, how do I throw this rod again? What am I doing here? Like, ah, you blind cast perfectly, <laughs> yeah. you know, for, 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 for an hours. hour straight and then the fish show up and then all all of a sudden, it's like amazing. the line knocks line, up, yeah. it gets caught on everything, you can't cast. That's how it always goes. Oh my goodness. What, that, there is an interesting, that is like an interesting, uh, it would be great for like a psych, you should have a psychiatrist come on and like try to figure out like, what is the, what <laughs> is that thing for, for, for like fishermen where when it's on, yeah. You're, 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 you lose control of your body. You lose control of your brain. You have to pee at all the same time. Like every, everything, everything happens all at once. And you could be, you could have 20 year, whatever you could have, be the most experienced fisherman in yeah. the world. But when it's on, something happens to you and you just kind of like you melt forget, a little. You forget, forget how to cast. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, incredible. Oh, the tarpon coming at you. Yeah. yeah. From, it could be from a hundred yards away. It's just like, I That's forget everything. It's I've like, ever uh, it's like when you when you go bird like when you go bird hunting, and you can sit there and smash clays all day, and 
the bird that like you see coming in and you're watching it come in and you see the track he's on and he's just perfectly coming in hardest one and you're like okay now i can raise the gun yep. i'm gonna try like you miss that one everyone but with the yep. one that's your buddy's like ah! and you like jump up and you rip the gun up you, don't think dude, about it. you hit yeah. it every time right right it's yeah maybe thing. maybe that's it when you have less time it yeah when it, when less reaction or something like that when you're like I just need to do it same with yeah. The, like yeah fishing same thing like all yeah. of a sudden fish are blowing up next year oh my god there's one yeah, yeah. that cast is easy because yeah. you're not thinking about it but yeah it's the one that you see from a, while, a mile away it's the, it's and the, the guy just like right. hey, get ready get ready right. get ready it's get like, ready right. you're like, oh, it's like wait is the uh, line right oh, or you have to run the boat to it so you're like now you're psyched you got like yeah. yeah two or three minutes to move the boat towards the fish and you're trying to be like all right oh, be really so quiet worse. I'm not gonna move my feet I got my line organized I'm not gonna get it Tangled, whatever. And then, and then you like, and then you go throw it, and you you know your leader gets oh, tangled, and your top wrapped. guide or whatever <laughs> <Jeez>. is wrapped. <laughs> oh, dude, so bad. Yeah, it's the, this is my first time moments. No. But it's but it's but like for any for for anyone that's like even doing this stuff for the first time, it's important to know that like you'd be doing 15 years dude yeah. it's still it's still you, that stuff still happens so oh, you, you kind of have to if it doesn't then you know it's well you're like you a doing? prodigy yeah. or something well, like well or or, right. or like taking beta blockers you're not you're probably not working hard enough if it's not happening like, or it might not be as funny anymore like that right. that feeling and that excitement whether it's your first time seeing you know sight right. fishing a fish or the hundredth like you still get that same feeling oh, that's my like, goodness. as long as that stays there that's like the, the best the number of like chip shots on redfish where they're like they're going to be at that perfect 10 o'clock angle they're cruising to you to where like the fly is going to be moving away from them just how they want it that i've blown oh my god constantly yeah. it's just i like them better when like the like it seems like the shots that are easier the shots that you're like this isn't going to work so yeah. let's just huck one out there and see yeah. what happens yeah all right let's get a little bit into uh the new england I don't even know what you would call it. Clam standard? chowder. No. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good, the, good couple the, of days. The New England standard of fishing. Yeah. Which it seems like to me, like when you like you guys grew up here, like was Albie fishing always what it is today? Like not not just in numbers, but in like like it's almost become a thing that it's like we're going to New England for Albie fishing. Yeah. I don't think so. My answer is no. Yeah. Uh, unequivocally no. Do you yeah. know like what happened? Somebody made it look cool on YouTube. Honestly, probably the internet. Yeah. Probably yeah. Instagram. I mean, I, I'm sure you, I'm sure like, you know, Some, I'm like, sure you talk. Some small tackle company that like just sends you stuff in the mail. Yeah. Like in a subscription <laughs> format, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but I, I, if you, I bet if you were to talk to some dudes that were 20 years older than us, and ask them the same question. Yeah. They'll be like, hell yeah, man, we've been doing Albies forever. For, forever. But they weren't telling anybody about right. it. And there was yeah, no yeah. Instagram and there and, and and people were when we grew up, the obsession, the only thing people thought about was striped bass. Yeah. Bluefish were ignored. We have a flounder fishery up here that is incredible. There's a cod ground, you know, cod and haddock and groundfish, whatever. Incredible. That gets that gets largely ignored by the inshore fishermen because of striped bass, which gets a ton of attention, gets a ton of resources, money, conservation, all this type of stuff. Um, and I, I think that's probably the Albies thing was protected by the internet not being there mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, for people to no. ruin it. Because <laughs> I mean, I went to I went to college on Long Island and like no, yeah, no yeah, never heard of that. like yeah. we should go chase Albies. Yeah. Well. Like I was saying, how, how I got into fly fishing from watching YouTube videos and seeing like how cool it is. It's probably the same thing. It's like yeah. the YouTube and like these people making cool edits and cool videos were how I discovered this. Like that's probably the same thing happened with Albies. As soon as someone saw it yeah. and saw the action that goes down and how crazy it is and like, you know, what, even if you hear about whatever, like once you see that, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. This makes sense. This is crazy. Like, yeah, I got to do it. And another weird thing about it too is that it's like, it's a month long. If, yeah. and if it. it's good, it's two months. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And it's like just a small window. It's just a relatively small part of New England, too, that get into it. And there's different yeah. pockets along the coast. Yeah. Like there's a scene in North Carolina, I'm sure, and like mid coast. There's, there's some, some Albi action to get into. But like when they show up around here, if you're a saltwater fly fisherman, that's like, that's like all you're thinking about. No, I, I mean, honestly, like when we've started about me coming up here and you were like, oh, we'll go catch some stripers and we'll go catch some albies. I was like, all right, albies, you know, that's 
cool. Like, I mean, I didn't know anything about them really I, other than like it looked cool. But after like the first day and seeing them just blow up on top and then I hooked it and like, I was like, all right, well, that's really cool. And then like hooking into them on spin tackle, I was like, I gotta do this on fly. Yeah, yeah. I gotta yeah. do this on fly. I'm gonna go, cast, guys. I'm gonna be on the bow for the next f- two hours. So just you two, know. two hours, dude. <laughs> I don't know. I think I was like six, yeah. maybe seven hours. We should clarify too, like even just like when we're talking about albies, like we're, yeah. like we're talking about false albacore. Yeah. And anywhere south of the Mason Dixon, people are calling these Benita. Right, and they don't give a shit about them. They right. don't care at all about them in Florida. They yeah. use a shark, shark bait. bait. Shark bait. <laughs> like it's not a sport fish, but up here, I, maybe it's because we're limited in the species that show up. It's short season. Inshore. We have a short season. We have in a general. short season. Yeah. We have you know a limited on, on what comes within a center console range, like of, of a, a day trip for fishing. Yeah. We got striped bass, bluefish, and then it's like this is the third part of that so like we get excited about it yeah. we care about it they get big here but yeah you go to different parts of the country they're like what are you doing <laughs> this is bait it's it, it's pretty incredible like the whole thing i mean you're you're you down it's like a full downsize of gear to do this so you mm-hmm. go to the small like the skinniest yeah. smallest saltwater setups that you have and you're fishing for tiny tuna i mean like yeah. that's yeah. at the end of the day that's what these things are and it's wild when you see them like they don't they certainly don't look that big but all of a sudden when it's on you know when when you're hooked up to this thing and it is peeling drag faster than anything you have ever caught before off of that reel you're like holy shit that's pretty incredible fish that's it i mean as far as fly like fish you can catch on a that's it up to a nine weight or ten weight. yeah that's the one i don't think yeah you know a, a tarpon obviously will jump and yeah, they don't really runs, put in runs like that. But I don't think there's anything else that no. will just straight peel Bone the fish. backing off. No, I mean which f- for they'll make quick runs, yeah. short runs on not on like, like no, not the they'll same. They'll make a couple good little. Yeah, but not the not like this, not the same. Not maybe so, permit like I, permit, may, but permit are more difficult to trick. Yeah, well, f- yeah, if you can even get one, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, it definitely. I mean, like to me, like the yeah, just that was unreal especially like hooking up to one and just i look down and i'm in my backing within three <laughs> seconds and <sighs> you were halfway through the back oh my yeah. goodness i was I like was, cause i remember in the yeah. video i was like yeah. like dude watch i was like just keep an eye on your backing like yeah, yeah. and this was right away i was like watch <laughs> that <laughs> yeah it's, it's um wild. no and i think i mean i think like probably one of the appeals is like and i'm gonna downplay striper and bluefish a little bit but like you know, we, we went after striper, we went after bluefish, and it seemed like in terms of targeting, finding them, getting on top of them, like it's, I hate to say it, but it's like relatively it's easy. Like, hey, there's some rocks with some good current yeah. around them. There's going to be bluefish. There's going to be stripers on top. And Albies, it's, it was just like you're watching the horizon hoping to see them right. somewhere, and right. then you got to get over there. And as yeah. soon as you get over there, you push them down. So then you got to hang out and just you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. Yeah. And then for fly, you got to hope they decide to run into the boat. Dude, it's, it'll yeah. drive you. It'll drive you to the border. Line it did. Insane. It drove. We oh. were almost. We were done. We were yeah. at the. We were at the. Done. The, the, the hospital door, man. Like yeah. that was. That yeah. was bad. <laughs> we're checking in. Yeah. We were. That was bad. We Filling got that paperwork. We we did what it, what I think is required with these things is is time. Yeah. Like. You need something needs to change. If it's not happening, something needs to change. Tide, wind, temperature, whatever. Day, night, whatever it is. Yeah. And we 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 went long enough for to go through two tide changes, and that's what it took. And it was on it was on the money on the tide change. Yeah. That suddenly the it was a it was a new day, and they we could you couldn't not we went from not being able to feed them at all to. To Everything. not being able to not feed them, yeah, mm-hmm. um, which is it's super interesting. You make a good point about like striped bass and bluefish on as far as finding them. Like the accessibility, yeah, of those fish is what makes this fishery special. Mm. Like you can go to a shoreline, you can go to a jetty, you can go to a beach and be able to have a chance of catching a striped bass. Yeah. And that's like that. I think is pretty unique to our northeast fishery is like the that someone especially learning or whatever 
you don't need a boat. You, you just need like a decent setup and can, and can be able to chase this fish at least for our four or five month window here. It seemed like easily. it seemed like every little rock outcropping we went past the last two days had three or four guys standing on it. Oh yeah, yeah, ready to go, yeah. just waiting. Um, all right, so let's get let, let's talk a little bit about stripers though, because that is like the bread and butter. That's like you think New England it's saltwater Amer- it's fishing. fish. Yeah, saltwater fish. When did do you guys remember like when you started? getting let's go with getting serious about we want to go chase stripers like what's the weather doing should I, should we be at work or should we be striper fishing you kicked this off so you've question. been doing it longer um i uh i grew up doing it like i remember i remember um gosh i remember i mean i i was i was real young even as a kid like living down in new jersey and like seeing guys fish on the beach and seeing f- big big fish swim around in you know knee deep water in, in the surf and whatever um but i think probably for me it was like high school like you know so you, for everybody you know it's fishing or not like so you get your, your driver's license all of a sudden the world is your oyster yeah. right mm-hmm. so that was no different for me like got my license and um I was playing sports and I basically quit everything that I, yeah. you know, my, much to the chagrin of my father, but I, you know, quit everything I had committed to because like I, all I really wanted to do in my free time was, was fish and had a couple, uh, uncles that were, um, that were like super, super into stripe, like the, you know, kind of same as me, super into stripe fishing. And so, um, I was fishing a lot with them and, um, and you know, then like, I don't know. I just kind of like never gave up on it. And, and then it evolved into the fly thing. And then honestly, like to give Marty credit, I got out kind of like got, when I got into fly fishing, I kind of moved off of saltwater fishing a little bit. I just got, got a little bit obsessed with trout fishing and everything. And all of a sudden Marty was in the picture and like started fishing with this guy. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, like this guy knows what he's doing. And, and, um, and that's, I think like, for when when we started hanging out and working together and fishing together and it was like then it started to be like went to your comment like well what's the wind and the weather and yeah, the tide yeah. like we started being real picky mm-hmm. like if we could we could pick a tide and a temperature and a wind direction and be like that's when we're going fishing because we know what will happen with these this combination of things and more often than not we, you, you're you know if you, you, you'd be right because you, you'd done enough. Um, you, you'd have enough experience to yeah. sort of put that put that puzzle piece together. So anyway, that's my spiel. Like I mentioned earlier, I, I didn't get into into saltwater fishing in, until college. And when I started, it was down in, in Florida on the, on, the, on the panhandle. And I was just like head over heels obsessed. Yeah. Once, once I saw it, once, once I had my first trip out into the flats... And I was, you know, getting pull, getting pulled around, looking like side fishing redfish. I was like, this is the coolest thing in the world. So when I went home, I like this. This was like a kid in a candy store, like brand new world open to me that I had been around my entire life. But same thing. I was playing sports. I was, you know, into, in the winter, I was like into skiing. In the summer, I was playing lacrosse all the time. So like fishing wasn't even on the radar. And it wasn't really even that like... You know, it's something a bunch of my friends were doing, um, but I now was like obsessed with it. So yeah. I got home, and then I that that same kind of type of fishing started to translate into like what we're doing here. Like, okay, it's sight fishing. It's a little bit different. Like, we're not necessarily pulling a flat, which I mean you can do around here, but it's it's a little bit limited. But it's like, you know, you're looking for fish on top. You're whatever working down beaches. Like, you're still sight fishing. You're still like engaged with it. And I like that. It just like took over for me. So, you know, went went all in, and then you know, once Brian and I started working together up here, it was like, all right, well, we've got a pretty cool fishery out here. Yeah, I mean, this is this is like ground zero yeah. for striper fishing yeah. up here for sure. Because for one, like up, up here, it's it's one of the unlike some areas in like southern New England, like where you might find a mixed bag. Like up here, it's like striper fishing. Like that's it. From as soon as we that first warm day in May. Till yeah, till basically November here. It's like it's striped bass. Yeah. So we, yeah, we put the time in. Started. We started seeing like signs of us. Like hey, you know what? Maybe we're figuring this out a little bit. You know, like okay, like 
we're going out early in May and finding fish in like these backwaters. Like, okay, like we're starting to see some patterns here. So, and then you do it the next year. You're like, huh? They're still there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we got to think. We got to a point where we were like circling days on the calendar, yeah. being yeah. like, right around Father's Day, this third week of June, whatever. Like. We in need between block, moons and yeah, whatnot. we need yeah. to block some time out to to yeah, go like, to get ready to get yeah. after them. Important distinction also that I just I just thought of like when we we're t- we we're talking about albies and we we're saying like oh like fish for albies around here like we are in um, the basically as far north in Massachusetts as you could go on the coast like right before the border of New Hampshire in Newbury there are no albies up here. Mm-hmm. So, like Marty was just saying, like basically our fishery is striped bass. We get some bluefish to mix in, and you could go tuna fishing from. But here. that's only recently. That that's, was only last. Well, time. yeah, it comes, and, yeah, it yeah, comes and yeah. goes. But some sometimes you hear, sometimes they're not. But like, it is a striped bass fishery. We got a hump to the to the south side of Cape Cod to go albie fishing. So, just to rewind it back to that, like the, you know, these albies for some reason hit the south side of Cape Cod and do not go around. Don't go through. There's a canal that they could go yeah. through to come up here. So it, it, it separates, and there's a ton of other you know, species that, that hang out down there. Um, but um, that's like the dividing line for us. Like mm-hmm. it's everything north of there, striped bass, that's it. It's that, that's what the fishery is going to be. You want to get brave and start spending money, uh, you can fish for tuna. We got great bluefin tuna fishery here. Um, doesn't, not, you know, it's, it's not necessarily a fly game. These things, these things get quite large. Um, <laughs> some psychos do it, um, but. Um, uh, God, it's like two days of fighting one fish. It, I mean, dude, even on the ridiculous conventional 130 pound gear, yeah. like reeling in an 800 pound tuna is a, is such a it's such a chore. Um, but uh, anyway, um, just something to mention. With yeah, that, but thing. that's like b- this being sorry, best being our fishery here. Like all off season, that's all. Oh. Like, what you think about this? All, all we're thinking about is yeah. the striped bass season. As as it gets close, like that first kind of warm ish oh, day in so April good. or whatever it is, it's like you can feel it. Like, all right, here we go. Sorry about you start seeing like people around, like things start turning green. There's events start yeah. popping yeah, up, yeah. like a little bit of shows, like oh, the buzz so starts going. I mean, dude, it's a it's a it's a whole thing around here. Yeah, it's a whole culture. It is part of New England. Is is the striped bass? Yeah. Let's say uh, I want to get into fishing. I live in New England. I want to get into fishing. Where do I start? Some just like beginner tips, hmm. tricks. To go to an institution tackle shop. Like yeah. find a pl- find a place that right. uh, find a place like we've got up here, Surfland, which is like it literally it's it's probably a hundred years old. Um, that's probably that, that's it's a very very good start. Um, selfishly selfish plug like yeah. We have some great resources um, uh, through Post Lion Badfish guides. I don't know, Marty. What else? What else would you say? Hmm. I guess like what where I'm going is like uh, like like somebody's got like all the gear and sure. they they want to know like what like so what what, like, what can I what should I be looking for like yeah. where should I go what should I do kind of deal. You've got that far as to get yeah. like, a good inshore spin or fly setup. Uh, I mean, like I was saying earlier, like the, the, the access that we have here in New England is great. Like mm-hmm. there is for every coastline that has a bunch of mansions on it, there's still some access points that yeah. you can go to. Like there are still designated public access points yep. we get to certain beaches like in, you can get to some of some of the beaches like they don't allow fishing certain hours, whatever it is um, for people swimming family what yeah. I, don't, I don't know why but like the beauty of new england is the i mean the just the the extended coastline all the way you know to the tip of maine um so i, I mean like use google maps yeah look up parks most most places like allow fishing um it's like any place you can get down to the water yeah start chucking <laughs> why not that's, there, that's yeah. the thing like that's the beauty of these fish like most of these striped bass like will be in a cast length yeah you know in a, a reachable cast so exploring beaches jetties whatever it is i mean everything that we saw like they're just stacked stacked on yeah. rocks yeah. yep um, it's like move it, it, where the water's moving like yep. yeah whether it's like white water because the waves are smashing and stuff or current or whatever like they're just hanging out waiting for something to get knocked off it's you know mooring and and get sucked in you know it's 
eat it. It's yeah. not. It's it's still a bass. Like it's not unlike a largemouth bass. Yeah, like yeah. You, they're an ambush predator. They like to hang around structure. Like that's what you're looking for. You know, you're just you're looking for for submerged rocks, like reefs. They're probably there. That's yeah, the yeah. thing. If you're on the coast and it looks yeah. fishy, they're, they're probably there. there. Yeah. And which just is, which keep is, trying different things. Which yeah. is so cool because, like, you get into, like, redfish and, you know, there's certain tides, there's certain places, there's certain times when you can easily, like, walk out to them. But a lot of times, like, you know, if, if everything's not really lined up, you, you can't really just put your boots on and go after them versus, like, these stripers. Like, you know, like we just said, like, you can – you can access the water they're probably there somewhere yeah, yeah. it might not be the right time it they might, might not eat tie, they might right. not eat but yeah. they're probably there yeah one thing that's cool them too is they give you like all these different looks like we're talking about you know i just i, I just said like oh they like the moving water and white water and and, uh, and uh, current whatever and, but then we'll find them on these like what anybody else would would look at and be like that's a bonefish flat yeah, yeah. you know it's like yeah. it's this white sand you know it's two two and a half three feet and there could I mean, we've we've seen schools of these bass, forty inch, fifty inch bass, hundreds of them, very very f- difficult to trick in those conditions. But they're there, and and they will eat. And you got to do a lot of things right, whatever. But it, they're 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 that's a really special thing about them is you can you can find them if you're standing on on a jetty. You can find them if you're out in the boat and fishing a rip or fishing an inlet or whatever. Um, and then you can pretend like you're in the Bahamas and go find mm-hmm. a, a, a sandbar or a sand flat or whatever and, and do it that way. Um, and uh, and you can employ all different, you know, that gives you like, the more you learn about fishing, you learn all these different techniques. Yeah. You get into fly fishing, you learn different flies and different methods and all the different things. There, there's like, something for everyone, yeah. like when you're targeting straight bass. Yeah. You could be night fishing yeah. from surf, oh, yeah. and it can yeah. be insane. You could go yeah. put live eels out at night and it and like it's, catch forty inch fish. You could be the you know the fly guy using super light gear, you targeting you know fish in smaller water, whatever yeah. it is. Like they, they're yeah they they will give you you could chase them forever and, and not fish them the same way twice. Like That's it's cool. just so many different ways to to chase them. We still like still find different ways and still no i mean i'm completely enamored and trying to figure out how how frequently i can get up here and and keep chasing them because it's you got to come up for the early the the first the first half of june program yeah that's a pretty good one yeah that's a different one because even like that one that i got that one striper i got to eat like he was only like he ate and ran off with that the hook i don't think the hook ever really made into his mouth but like that was a different fight. And Dude, that there? immediately felt like a different fight. I forget how hard they fight compared to other yeah. fish a lot until, and until like you hook a good one and you're reminded. Because mm-hmm. it's a, it's the same size as like you know a lot of different fish that we chase, yeah. like the southeast, whatever. But they got some spark to it. They're yeah. feisty. Yeah, I mean that one. Like I was like, well, I'm going into the backing quick. Yeah. And even like fighting them, even fighting them on spin tackles, ridiculous. Mm. But those bluefish, though. Oh my goodness! Those things are mean. Those are big ones too. Like the ones yeah. we were catch. So I, like I went to college, you know, Eastern Long Island Sound. So we didn't get them that big. We'd basically look for schools of bunker and mm-hmm. start chasing them around the schools of bunker. But they were like, if we ever saw one that size, we would have been like, this is crazy. And that's every single one is, you know, as big as those ones were that that we were catching. And those things just, they didn't want to come to the boat. People love to knock bluefish yeah. for a variety of reasons. And even like, even the spin guy that like likes to catch fish, and keep fish, and eat fish. They don't like them because they're oily and they don't yeah. taste good. Which is they don't know how to cook. Not, that's, yeah, the, as, that's, yeah. that's the problem. They don't. They don't know. What yeah, like doing. on fly, I, yeah, they have teeth and they'll destroy your stuff. But like, as far as a game fish <laughs> that is fun Dude. to catch, Dude. it doesn't get any better. They Dude. will they'll annihilate anything. Anything. Yeah when when a striped bass would turn something down or they're being picky or whatever a bluefish will annihilate anything it will send a top water into space <laughs> <laughs> like they, they're they're super aggressive they fight twice as hard as striped bass yeah. if not more yeah i mean it's like the one of the ultimate game fish yeah no. and when and when if you're going to eat a fish bluefish are a good one to fantastic. eat fantastic and if you do it right, which is not that hard, because all you got to do is put on a smoker for all you freaking bluefish haters out there. <laughs> if you just get a smoker, 
and smoked and brine it and smoke the damn thing and it's it it the, you can make the stuff taste like candy eating it on its own you can turn it into a dip like a pate type thing you can steak them i mean you, you can do a million different ways and like people people shit all over this stuff they think it's like a junk. They go out fishing for stripers. They're like, oh damn it! Like we're on yeah. bluefish. <laughs> Blues are oh, they get, the they, they, they friggin' they leave and go you find get through the bluefish. They go <laughs> they go somewhere else where they can't find any fish. Yeah, because they were catching too many bluefish at the other place, which is you know whatever. I find it, like if if you bleed them, I think the the big thing is like they yeah. you know they, they don't ice. bleed out into yeah. the meat. If you can bleed those fish, I mean oh, so smoking good. them is fantastic. But if you do it right, bleed them immediately. Like you said, get it on ice. I mean, it could be some of the best grilled fish. I've had. I've learned like with just fish in general, like knock them in the head, bleed them out, get them on ice. Like yeah. it doesn't matter what it is. You do yeah. that, it's right. hundred times better. Yeah, yeah. Never, never take a fish that you catch and just throw it on the <laughs> yeah. deck of the boat or in the cooler <laughs> or what. It would. I mean, I you, you see like you know not not probably so much with guides but like head boat party boat yeah. type things where oh, yeah. they're bringing 50 people out and they're catching fish and they throw just take the bucket. damn fish and they throw it in a bucket <laughs> sitting in the sun for oh. six hours while everyone's fishing and Sounds, that's, that's half of that fish is going to be is going to be wasted yeah. um you got you got if you can if you have a knife i mean a reasonably sharp knife a, a freaking swiss army anything if you're going to eat a fish doesn't matter what it is Cut it below the throat, get the blood out of it, and put it in something that's cold. And it will, you can eat it raw. You can cut, you can eat it on your drive home. Um, but you, you got to get the blood out of it. That's probably the number one, the number one thing. Somebody needs to make like a really good, uh, what's it called? Ikejima? You heard of that? Oh, Ikejima, yes, yeah. Yeah, like a really yes. good tool for that. I got one off to like Amazon or something. It was yeah. terrible. Yeah. Someone, t- I, someone took me off to use piano wire. Like a really? thicker wire but just yeah. to like yeah, i've never done the tail the tail part but i'll like like when i kill a redfish or a black drum like i i do the head spike brain spike yeah yeah, yeah but like doing like a nine inch bubble blade like i'm like i'm gonna cut my hand <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but the, the yeah the, the thought process by the kajime is it's a you put it you run a cord through the the nervous the, the nervous yeah. system of the spine and it just t- shuts off all Everything. like Everything. sensory yeah to the other fish so there's less stress and whatever yeah ruining the meat yeah i, I gotta wa- get more into that i wonder yeah i was just gonna say i wonder if there i mean i'm sure there is but i wonder if there's like some science there like oh yeah like, yeah but like like i'm sure that's why my point is i'm sure there is yeah, yeah. where can we go learn more yeah, about right. that like who is publishing this stuff i heard so, it on a podcast we get, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, that would be great to like understand that a, Not a, this bit, one, a bit more well, yeah. now, now I, what, the, any of your listeners just heard it here. So Boom. EKG, maybe. Google it. It's All Japanese. Right. It's Japanese for yeah, smash yeah. it in the head with a, <laughs> with a spear. Sh- shove a spike through its brain. Yeah. All right, so final, the final question. And Marty, you've been giving a heads up. Brian, you're in the cold I on this I wish I didn't get a heads up. Oh, oh it makes it worse. It. It. Do you want to go first, then? No, I want to see what Brian says. Okay, Brian. If you could go fish anywhere in the world, where would it be? What would you be fishing for? Oh, boy. Such a hard question. Yeah. I mean, on the one hand, like I'm, you know, I've had, I've been lucky in life, and been able to go some places and do some pretty cool things and see some pretty cool things and fish and everything. Um, ooh, um, honestly, one, you know, this is going to sound pedestrian. I've never been tarpon fishing and like it's pr- not that hard to get on a flight and go to Florida and go uh, speaking of Florida actually like thoughts and prayers for Florida right yeah. now I mean Jesus Christ they just got they that tarp I mean they just got rocked but um uh that's prop like that's the that would probably be for me like the next thing definitely not the most exotic like trip mm. go around the world Christmas Island but like GTs whatever dude, thing, that's the, but I, I think Peter you and I were talking about the other day like that is the pinnacle of yep. fly fishing that is key west top. tarpon or tarpon. keys tarpon I mean, yeah where are you gonna go catch a 150 pound anything inshore you know where you're where you're whatever a quarter mile from the sand you're not running anywhere to do this stuff and so i like that's the pedestrian answer i think i'm, I'm sure i could come up with something exotic I, ira pima gold dorada yeah, whatever yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. but like at some point all that stuff it's in my opinion kind of becomes the same like 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you could you could do what you could run around and try to get every species on a fly. Um, I there's probably a reason why tarpon, you know, have this moniker of the silver king. Like that. That's yep. probably it. That's the that's the that's the pinnacle. Marty. God. Beat that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I I was warned by this question. I still. You know, all night to think about, about it. All night. Um, the lobster illusions probably didn't help. It's probably, yeah. It's probably humor. Yeah, that's behind the scenes <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, Tradition. <laughs> I got to agree with Brian. I, I have, um, I've been lucky to, to go to some very cool places and do a lot of very cool fishing. Um, is that your slack? That is terrible. I hope not. Um, but... My thing now is, is I, I've got to kick, I've, I've caught a lot of fish. I've caught some close to world record fish, been done some really cool places, whatever, been great lodges, Central America, whatever. I now am more excited about like the whole experience versus like the fish. Like, yeah. I don't need to go catch, like you're saying, this giant fish or yeah. this rare fish or this hard to catch fish. I want to go to places that are just like a very cool experience they have good food they have cool people they're beautiful whatever it is in places that i haven't been yet so like that's my thing it's like going forward is it's not just about like being on the water and catching certain fish because like I, I don't measure trips the same as i used to now mm-hmm. i don't measure trips by like how great the fishing is or like the biggest fish i caught it's like what experience did i have who are the people that i got to meet and like, how was the place? How was the food? How was the beer? Whatever it is, that's what I'm most excited about. So like, I want to go to like Japan. Yeah. Maybe there's some cool like yeah. trout fishing in the yeah. mountains yeah. there, and I can yeah. go like experience that culture. I don't know, like somewhere in Europe or like yeah. go to Ireland and like fish some trout streams. Whatever it is, like that's kind of what would like excite me more. If someone came to me and was like, dude, I got like this place where we can go catch these giant fish, it's gonna be epic. You know, it's the middle of nowhere. I'm like, ah, dude. Like there's, gonna be, there's gonna be 25 other people at the lodge <laughs> yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. $5,000, yeah. you have to be on a flight for 36 yeah, hours. Yeah, cool, yeah. all right. I'm like, great, man, but if someone's like, you know, I wanna go to this place, cause like, the food is fantastic, yeah. and like, there's like, cool bars and nightlife or whatever like this culture is cool like i'm like all right dude sign me up yeah i I think that's the next i think that's the next thing with fishing like obviously the destination lodge fishing that's clearly a model it's been it's it's works it's been done there's no there's no issues there i think what marty's saying is the next thing i think i think you're not alone in that 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 it's going to be people are going to want more than just going out and like catching a, a dozen bonefish over a three day span. It's yeah, not. It's right. that's not what. That's not all people are looking. Let me for. catch one good bonefish. One the and fish, then, the, and then have a great time yes. with yeah. like my friends yes. or cool people. And have where, a great meal, or whatever. It's where like I love. I mean, I absolutely love the DIY rolling into an area and, that I've yeah. never been and like chasing a fish, and. I think sometimes though, like I also love the idea of like going to like a lodge or something because you get that kind of more intimate interaction with some of the locals who then you can sit there and talk to all day on a boat and be like, hey, we want to go experience, you know, the local nightlife or local culture or something. And they can point you in the right direction where if, you know, you roll into someplace in your DIY, you might cook at home, stay at home, just yeah. fish all day. And I think there's, I mean, I think there's definitely like a, I don't know, maybe balance of like, doing a little bit of both the best part of going to a lodge for me is sitting around the fire at night mm-hmm. <laughs> drinking tequila <laughs> shooting, shooting the shit and just telling stories yeah. and ripping on each other lying like that yeah lying. yeah it's it's constant lying. lies <laughs> that's the best part yeah. that's the best part of a fishing trip for me yeah. yeah well i really appreciate you guys getting me up here it's been like Lights out, epic. We had a good time. It was yeah. all right. <laughs> it's because you didn't go out yesterday. <laughs> you had a, to work. It was a biblical <laughs> Albi blitz <laughs> once in a generation. You know, I got to work on this working thing. I don't know why I'm doing it so much. <laughs> um, they're not here today, but sh- huge shout out. Thank you to Cam and Ian uh, for going out with us yesterday. 
those guys are awesome. I'm gonna leave links down below for those two guys and obviously for everything that you two are up to and you guys got going on. If you haven't already, you should check out Postfly. You should check out Badfish. Give them a follow, say hi, I yeah, guess. I don't know, yeah. you know, see, how, see what they're up yeah. to. Slide into the DM. An, emo just slide an emoji or something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, shoot them a DM. Comment or on emoji. Instagram. Let's get yeah, the algorithm. Do we need yeah. to get the yeah. comments yeah. on the algorithm? Come on. Yeah. Do some impressions. If you're from Instagram, what are you guys <laughs> doing over there? Yeah. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. And uh, if you're listening to this on like Apple or Google or whatever the podcast station is, leave a review, leave a five stars. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hit like, hit subscribe, all that stuff. I appreciate you guys listening in. Thank you guys again. And that's it. That's it. We're done. Great. We're out. It's over. Fun. And scene. I'll keep going. And cut. Thanks, Peter. You want to keep going? So the first time I got to Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're, we're done. done. We're done. <laughs>